Hey, how's it going guys? This is your boy Haste, and today we're going to be talking about abilities in Legion for Death Knights. And I believe this is going to be like patch 7 point something or something crazy along those lines uh, for Legion here. So let's talk about it. Basically, I really want to focus uh, on this video just on mainly Frost Death Knights. And then we'll focus on some of the other highlights for the other specs that I kind of want to talk about too because they're really cool. But other than that, a lot of these changes are actually just revamping abilities um, to fit in as passives and stuff within the next uh, expansion. There are a lot of reworks. They're not really adding too much. I mean, this is kind of telling me exactly what rotation we're going to be doing on a Frost Death Knight and Legion. So I'll probably be able to craft up a, th uh, a theory for that pretty soon. Um, I've definitely got it in my mind. I had it made up earlier, and this kind of just clarified it for us. Now, Army of the Dead, it's kind of cool. It's only going to be basically, uh, the taunting's going to be blood only. I believe everyone's still going to get it. Nothing really changes there. Um, let's scroll down. Blood Boil, basically just saying blood and frost. You know, or blood and and holy frost don't get it. You know, blood plague. Basically changed a little bit now that's kind of cool how blood plague changed uh basically is going to heal the caster for one percent of their maximum health um every three seconds which is going to be a little bit of a heal now blood presence as you can see here now they said they were taking out presences well they aren't really taking them out they're just forcing us to be our actual presence um and basically making it a passive as you can see here uh for blood death knights which is what they're also going to do for frost and unholy so we're not going to be facing a huge nerf uh, for that reason. Now, Frost and Unholy only, basically, it looks like they're going to only let Chains be Frost and Unholy. Um, no more Blood Death Knights. No more Blood Death Knights spam and Chain. So that may balance it out a bit more to make sure Bloods aren't extremely OP in uh, PvP. Now, Dark Sakura, let me see how this changes, because this could have a pretty good effect on what's going on. Um, now, basically, that ability, it looks like it's just being buffed by another 5 seconds. Um, not that too big. You know, it's when you land a killing blow, and then you can heal with a big death strike. Just 5 seconds longer. Now, let's get through some of these. Now, none of these we really know. Now, one thing is death strike. Death strike is being changed. And the way it's being changed, I'm not necessarily sure of it, but it looks like it's one of those abilities... That you fall back on after taking damage is what they want it to be. Because if you look at Focus Dark Power into a strike that deals 135% physical damage. And then heals you for 50% of all the damage taken in the last 6 seconds. And a minimum of 7% of maximum health. Alright, so you take a lot of damage, you death strike. You take a lot of damage, you death strike. You take a lot of damage, you death strike. Now, it's only going to let you heal 50% of that damage. So they're basically saying your death strike is going to cap at a certain point. So you won't have super healing and you can't stay alive forever spamming death strike. Uh, that's their way of saying that, I suppose. Um, here's another cool thing for us. Empowered rune weapon is only frost now. Only frost. No one holy gets it. No uh, blood gets it. It's just frost DKs, according to this. Because you see how that has that little symbol re requires death knight? Frost. Yeah, there you go. All right, Frost Fever. It has a chance now to grant a Death Knight or grant a Death Knight five more runic power, which uh, occurs every three seconds for thirty seconds, like the heal earlier, which is absolutely amazing, guys. Because like that extra runic power is bread and butter for that big Frost damage. All right, Death Knight freezes. All right, that's just is it normal? Let me see. Oh, it's just Frost and Unholy. Looks like maybe they switched one up for blood. Probably, I can imagine. But it looks like they basically just made that prioritize on blood and unholy. Let's see if the interrupt has changed at all. Um, for seconds, it's the exact same. It just comes at a higher level. Looks like they actually made a lot of the DK abilities come at a later level when you're leveling up instead of just getting them at like 57. Right, on a pale horse. It does not, this, this is one of the things I looked at on a pale horse and I thought, hmm, because one of the things we're used to as Death Knights is uh, movement speed only reduces uh, by 30%. So you can't really get like completely slowed or really slowed. And it looks like it's just going to add 20% to your mouse or mount increase now uh, as a passive because uh, I guess you can't go 
Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> that one's interesting. That one we gotta have to watch. It's gonna be hard to fight hunters and stuff if uh, we really, really get slowed. Could be tough. Could be tough. Outbreak now is an holy only, guys. An holy only. Basically deals damage on the initial hit. Shadow damage surrounds the target with... Yeah, not even gonna try that. Lasting for 6 seconds. That causes the target and all nearby enemies to infect with the plague. Basically, this plague erupts with infected target dies. Basically, you know, like a corpse explosion. This is one of the cool things uh, that Unholy is getting that we found. And these also, disease also has a 30% chance to erupt each time it deals damage. So that's really cool. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to see how that plague's used uh, with Unholy actually happening. Um, Rune of Razor Ice is actually being buffed by 4%. Which is really cool. Looks like another little buff to Frost there in Legion. Um, Rune of the Fallen Crusader is also being buffed by 3% healing. So it's going to be 6%. And another 5% uh, strength percentage. Which is going to be 25% strength on proc. Which is going to be really OP for us. We really like that. Unholy Presence. New name, Death's Advance. What are they talking about there? Oh, increased movement speed by 15%. I thought they just said it was 20%. You know, some things on this page really are confusing with how they list them. Because up there it just said that it's moving to 20% passive. And down here it's only saying it's a 15% passive for Unholy Presence. But it doesn't say it up there. Some things are really confusing. I don't think they come out correctly when they bring them out of... Because uh... I can imagine what they do to get all these notes is they basically remove the um, actual... What word am I looking for? It's kind of like running a private server and you take the background information off of there and you run through the uh, the scripting and find out what's going on with the game later on. Uh, so it never really comes out in translation correctly, I believe, on these kinds of websites. But they give you a nice little insight to look into them. All right, removed. Plague Strike. I'm looking at that going, what? And it says unholy. Now, does that mean Plague Strike is still there for unholy? I believe so. Um, for the other classes, No. The other weird thing is uh, Icy Touch. Like, these are removed. Now, it's really weird because I believe, okay, Soul Reaper makes sense. Horn of Winter kind of makes sense, unless it's just a passive now that we give off, which might be it. And then Frost Presence makes sense of being removed because, you know, it's going to a passive, just like I said before. Oh, my nose is just really bad right now. And I'm like, <laughs> let me itch my nose! All right, so... Talents and specialization, new specialization. What is this? Runic longevity. Gain a seventh rune that will regenerate of your runes is increased by 10%. So does that mean we get seven runes? Do we get seven runes? All right. March of the Dam. These are things you can probably spec into, it looks like, uh, with talents maybe that they're going to add in, which is going to be cool. You cannot be slowed below 100% movement speed. What? <laughs> And the duration of effects that remove control of your character reduced by 20%. Now, the bottom part is definitely going to be the passive part off of uh, uh, Frost Presence, like I was saying earlier. Because, you know, you can see it reduces duration of effects. Remove control of your character by 20%. Same thing. And it makes it so you can't be slowed below 100% movement speed. Which is basically going to be the new... Uh, we saw it uh, up above... Um, it's still in game. You can use it once in a while to have a burst of speed. Anyways, guys, let's look at the next one. Spellbreaker increases anti-magic cell duration by 60% and maximum absorption value by 50%. Basically, this is going to be something you spec into, like I said before. Um, this is basically a uh, uh, you know a band-aid for the fact that we're losing our major glyph of um, anti-magic shell, basically making up for that. Now, this one I'm not really sure about. This one seems buggy. Fortitude by, uh, you know, 60,000 seconds and increases reduction. You know, I can see its reduction being reduced, but increase its damage. See, that's the thing. Like, some things just don't come through correctly when you're looking at this stuff. Like, that right there. That shouldn't write. All right, I'm going to skip over most of these uh, blood abilities because I didn't really look for too far into them, and I don't really want to talk about those and focus on those for now. I might do it later on if you guys want me to. Who knows? All right, so let's focus on these Frost Talents. Now, these are going to give us uh, an insight to our rotation. This is what actually told us, told me what our rotation was going to be because I wasn't really sure about it. And I thought before 
that frost strikes were going to be completely just just fillers. Now, I'm not actually going to be a filler if we um, actually get those big frost strike crits like I was talking about. Now let's go down these. See, icy talons. Frost strike hits increases your melee attack speed by 25%. So like I was saying, those fillers. Now when you hit, you'll get like a burst of attack that you you know chance proc that you attack really fast, which is going to add into that big burst. So that's going to be really cool when you just see a DK just going ham with melee swings like it's in a hand shaman. Right, so Sub-Zero, your killing machine also causes your next obliterate to deal an additional 30% damage as frost damage. That's really cool, guys. I think it's actually taking that extra base of the big frost strikes and basing it into obliterate and giving us some major frost damage with that attack, causing mastery to actually affect obliterate instead of purely stacking strength of versatility to get the top end, uh, top end on obliterate. Now look at the next one is Frozen Pulse. Your auto attacks have a chance to cause you to radiate intense cold, infecting one frost damage on all nearby enemies. Well, Frozen Pulse, I believe that's going to be... I don't even know what that is. That's interesting. That must be one of the newer things. It's definitely going to be a passive that we don't hit. Now, this is what I was thinking. The Remorseless Winter. Yes, guys, I know what Remorseless Winter does. Wait, that's without remorse. I just screwed up that ability again. No one cares. Let's do this. Killing Machine now affects Frost Strikes. Ah so now, Killing Machine now affects Frost Strike with the passive that we get. So they did take it out of the original ability, and it made it look like we weren't going to get those big uh, Frost Strikes anymore with Killing Machine. But it looks like Without Remorse is a passive they added in. Um, it says NYI at the end of it, so maybe that's not yet incorporated, but who knows. Uh, killing Machine Frost Strikes now affect Frost Strikes, and your auto attacks are more likely to generate Killing Machine. So basically, that's going to make it so we can use it on our Frost Strikes, or obliterate again still it looks like they're gonna they might put that back in they're thinking about it they still got the NYI after I don't know what that really means but that was my best guess um we got next we got biting winds increase your chance for obliterate to trigger rhyme by 25 percent up to two charges of killing machine and rhyme can be stored think about this guys think about this for a minute now you can store up to two charges so that's, think about those big obliterates we've been getting, or those big frost strikes. Imagine having two of those just waiting, just waiting. So you'll save those up for that burst, and you'll store those away. You'll get ready. You'll get all your runes. you get your runic power. You got those stored up, and you're just going to lay out burst, lay out them two big crits right away. That's cool. That's cool, guys. I can't wait to uh, be using that kind of burst. That's really going to enhance our now burst instead of, you know, the overtime burst, which I believe they're trying to bring forward with dual wield. Uh, instead of making us more of, instead of us being more of the grind class that we already are. Alright, so next we got that Soul Asylum. Hungering Rune Blade now starts with five souls trapped already. And the damage of the explosion is increased by 15%. And you're going, what the hell is Hungering Rune Blade? We'll talk about it down below in just a minute. It hasn't talked about the ability. And yeah, we're going to start taking souls and doing crazy stuff like we should as a Death Knight, which is awesome. Now look at this guys, this is really cool. Glacial Advance. Summon Glacial Spikes from the ground that advance forward, dealing zero frost damage to enemies near the erupted point. So that's like a big thing coming up from the ground, just being like, ha ha, Lich King, full status. I'm ready to do that guys. It's only like a 12 second cooldown. So it sounds like that's going to be another one of those uh, abilities, along with uh, the Remorseless Winter that we're going to be using, along with our normal rotation and adding that in. Now, I can definitely see our normal rotation, but as for these random abilities that we're going to throw in, I believe they're just going to be like extra damage that we're tossing in and more abilities. Now, these are going to be where the more abilities come from that we're going to be hitting to deal more damage in these situations, guys. That's going to make the rotation a bit harder. Everyone's like, ah, basic, it's all being eliminated. We're mad, everything's being taken away. They are adding things in, guys. New things are coming. I'm ready for them. I'm excited for them. Some of them sounds really cool. Uh, Frost Fever. Grants the Death Knight 50 runic power. I don't know about that one. That one seems like an iffy translation coming through because we saw up above. That's not what Frost Fever even does. I don't know why it would just give you, ha ha, you got Frost Fever on me. 50 runic power. You imagine what that'd be like in a BG. That just doesn't make sense. So we're going to go down to the last really cool thing that they're putting in for Frost. Now, Hungering Rune Blade. Now, I'm curious about this. Like, what are we going to sacrifice to enchant our weapon? Or is this a passive? No, it's an actual ability. Would you look at that? Maybe. 20 second cooldown. Drain the warm 
Nearby and okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're just like, boom, give us your souls. Like straight, straight Arthas status and deals, uh, you know, 25 frost damage. <laughs> and if you accumulate 25 fragments, the cooldown of the ability is reset and you radiate a blast of cold. So it's just like um, having Shadowmorn, you know, you stack up them Shadowmorn procs and then you explode and it just hits everybody. That's going to be really cool. That's going to be a big o AoE. Uh, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for some crazy stuff like that, guys. That would be really cool. Now, the other things I want to talk about, uh, believe it or not, is a couple unholy things. Now, this is really cool. I was really curious to know exactly what unholy we had planned, exactly what little what little things they had stored away. So I had to check. Check this out. Little stinker. This is going to be uh, the ability when ghouls use claw, it basically and it exhales a gas cloud that's going to, like, hit the enemies. What? That's cool. That's cool. We got little fart clouds coming off the ghouls. And everyone's going to be smelling it. All right, next we got All Will Serve. Basically, it's going to give you that second minion I was talking about in the other video. And we were reading through those notes, which is going to be absolutely cool. All right, skipping through some of these, we're going to go down to this one. Now, this is the one that I'm like, huh? what? All right, they're going to get a Tortured Spirit, which is going to be like, hey, 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 I'm on a Holy Death Knight. Have a spirit. Have two pets. You got three pets on you. You gonna make it worse? They still got gargoyle. You got four pets on you. You have a whole damn unholy army on you. As in holy. That's pretty funny. That's funny. I can't wait to see people running around. Why are the pets on me? Get the pets on me. Or they're gonna be like, Ew, unholy DK, so much skill. You got four pets and you don't even attack. Like, oh, just wait for it, guys. It's gonna be funny. It's gotta be the next skillipede with unholy DK. Frickin' skillipede. People are going to be mad. Uh, let's look through a couple more of these. Uh, Breath of Sintra goes. Uh, is it really changing? Not necessarily. Uh, not that we're going to see as of now. Um, Asphyxiate looks like it's actually going to be a four-second stun now instead of a five-second stun for the people that are wanting to know that. It looks like they're buffing anti-magic zone another two-second, and it's going to buff that up to 60% which is going to make Anti-Magic Zone, I can imagine, a viable ability in Arena coming up because people always used to use it. Nowadays, you don't use it as much because it really was just kind of do you. Um, just create a ground. See if that changes at all. No, it looks like DKs just get it earlier. It requires level 60 now. See, that's what I'm saying. A lot of these abilities are coming a, either a lot earlier or a lot later. Which is probably either going to mean this isn't a passive ability now, or you have to spec into it at level 60. But who knows? We're going to have to see. Uh, as for these abilities, it looks like Runic Corruption is getting nerfed, and Runic Empowerment is getting nerfed. So if they're keeping Rune Tap, I don't know if they are. It doesn't quite speculate at this point. That could actually basically forcing us to use blood tap at that point if those drop down that much but we're gonna have to wait and see and of course we got some more frost stuff down here um basically it looks like some of their main internal abilities being switched around of course we'll check them out looks like they're they're buffing the or I, you can't really say buffing i guess at that point but they're making uh looks like they're making both the weapons deal full damage and then add them together for percentage wise to deal the frost damage uh, with Frost Strikes, it could be wrong, but uh, it sounded about right to me. And then also, it's switching, instead of 110% attack power, they're changing it to like 38.52% attack power, which should probably make it easier for them to tweak a bit, make things less OP than just making them a round general number uh, as a percentage. So that would be cool. Now uh, we got Killing Machine. Your auto attacks have a chance to make your next obliterate, or Frost Strike automatically crit. Now, as we said before, it just says... Your auto attacks have a chance to make your next obliterate automatically critically strike. But as we saw above, there's going to be that ability they're adding in that'll make something also affect your frost strike. Obliterate is actually going to deal a higher amount of damage uh, compared to frost strike, as you can see. So it's definitely going to be one of our main damaging attacks. As much as I didn't really want it to be with dual wield, it looks like it's going to end up being anyways. Um, Pillar of Frost looks like it's being buffed by another 5%, and Rhyme, your builder, okay, and of course, um, your Rhyme causes your Obliterates to have a chance to proc and make your next Talent Blast be free, which also deals 300%, uh, 
uh, additional damage, which is going to be a huge Howling Blast for AoE and a few things more. And down here, you can see that Summon Gargoyle is still in the game for Unholy for those four pets, like I was talking earlier. Now, here's all the glyphs removed. You know, like I'm saying, they just get rid of all them big glyphs. They're gone. All the glyphs are gone. And down there, we got Druid and other things. That's going to be it for the Legion patch notes, guys. It looks like we're looking at a few extra um, abilities for dealing damage over time. A couple extra little procs. A couple soul-taking things. We got some cool things incoming, guys. I'm really excited for them. I hope you are, too. But that's going to be it for these Legion patch notes. Um, as I said before, I'll scroll up. Man, eh, I'll, I'll just let you know in the intro in the video. Um, when it, what exactly patch notes these are. But anyways, guys... Until next time, this was your boy Hayes.